you need a home server right now. Now you might be thinking, I don't need a home server. What do I need a home server for? And don't they cost thousands of dollars? Those are all valid questions. But in today's video, you'll learn why you need one or more servers, different types of servers, or acting as a server, planning ahead so you can avoid big mistakes, as well as capacity planning so you don't over or under buy. Now, if you are new to IT or just getting your feet wet, then I do have some extra bonus information in this video, but you gotta stick around and watch the whole thing or you will miss it. Before we get started, there's lots of reasons on why you would want a home server, such as if you wanted to learn about virtualization or you wanted your own network storage, or if you wanted to run like a private DNS and block ads with something like Pi-hole. Now, if you're thinking I'm not that technical and I'm not really getting into IT, but I'm curious about servers, then I think there are two types of servers that you would probably be more interested in. And that would be streaming your own media. So running something like your own Plex server and running something like Home Assistant to manage all of your smart devices at home. But in a bit, I can show you how to find the server that will fit your environment best at an affordable price. Now, earlier I said acting as a server. And what I mean by that is that you could just have a older desktop that you could repurpose as a server. Now it's not technically a server because you wouldn't have out of band management, say iDRAC or IPMI. Although you could add those with a Pi KVM in which I'll probably link a video around here on how that works. Now, if sound is a concern as well as cooling, then you might want to consider getting something smaller that is still a server. For example, like the Zima board. Now, now, the Zima board is a single board computer and it was designed with the purpose to be running as a server. Now, in a future video, I will go ahead and unbox this and go in depth on what you can and cannot do with one of these. But the short of it is that this is basically about the same form factor as like a Raspberry Pi, but instead of using ARM architecture for the CPU, it uses x86, meaning it has an Intel processor, which also means that you can run Windows on it if you're not familiar with Linux yet. Depending on your use case scenario for your servers, let's say that you're going to get into learning virtualization, running a home lab with a bunch of VMs on it, you want to ask yourself, is this going to be running 24 seven? Does it have to be fast? And do I have a budget that I want to spend to be able to purchase this? Now, let's say, for example, I want to build a home lab on just a single server. Now, something to consider is sound. And what I mean by that is, let's say you have a 1U server. Now, the one behind me, I have a video that I'll link up above that I show you how to override the fan curves on the the IPMI using IPMI tool. Now, depending on your server, you may or may not be able to do the same thing that I did, being quiet enough that I can record and it's just right behind me. So if sound is a concern, you might want to look at a 2U server because they are typically going to be quieter than 1U will be. One thing that you might want to consider is if you plan on having any type of media platform for streaming, such as Plex, then you might want to look back at something like the Zima board because it has integrated built-in Intel graphics. And why that is important is for the transcoding of the streams is going to be much more efficient using GPU cores versus processor cores, say in a Xeon server. Now with that out of the way, if you wanna just run a bunch of VMs, then a physical server might be the best option for you. Now, the higher the clock rate, the snappier it theoretically could be. And what I mean by that is that if you have slower hard drives that are running inside of the server, the bottleneck will be your disk storage subsystem. Now, before we go shopping for a used server, if you have any questions, please drop them in the comment section down below. Now, first, we're going to pull up labgopher.com. Basically, it is a search engine to find the right server on eBay for you. Now, there's several ways to search for what you're looking for. I live in the Southwest in Arizona. I'm going to set a price, let's just say 300 to 650. And I want one or two processors. I don't really care about the pass mark score. Plus it only goes up to 30,000 and memory and storage. I'll just leave that. Now we can see all these various results. I do want to let you know that with HP's, if you don't have a paid support contract, then you can't get firmware updates unless if it's listed as a critical patch. Dell, on the other hand, they don't really care. You can just go to dell.com slash support and download stuff. Supermicro is also really good as well too. And I've also had great experience with Gigabyte. Here is a Dell R720 for $300 and it is a fair grade, 64 gigs of RAM. Now for the processor, I wanna point out a couple things. 
You have E3 and also E5 processors. E3s are going to have less cache and core count, and then E5s are the bigger chips that are faster and more expensive and also more power hungry. Now, when you look at the nomenclature here, this V2 basically means that it is a Ivy Bridge era processor, meaning a third generation i-series. So think of this as like a souped up i7-3770 that only runs at two gigahertz. Now this guy here, because it's a V3, that is going to be a Haswell-based architecture processor. And when you go up in the versions of the chips, you're going to not only get better performance, but also less heat and more power efficiency. So let's see how new of a chip that we can find. Now this guy here, because it's the E5-2630L, that is a low clock speed. So you can see it is 1.8 gigahertz, but it does have 10 cores. Completely avoid these X5690s if they're just ancient. The Dell R710s also have limitations for the PCI Express lanes. So even if you pop in an NVMe drive, it's not gonna perform to its full speed. Now sorting by the clock speed, and here's some 3.5 gigahertz V4s. That's not bad, Let's see 451, 528. So here at 438 bucks, we'll just click on this. And we can see this is a a Gen 9 HP Perliant DL380. Now this is a 2U server, so it's going to be quieter than the 1Us, but notice it shows the V3. So it's not always perfect. So this here is the R730 and it holds eight two and a half inch drives. Now the XD, which stands for extra density, you can see this holds a bunch of drives. Now, if these fit your budget, then it might be the perfect fit for your environment, but you also got to consider the cost of storage because most of the time servers off of eBay probably don't come with drives in it because they can cost thousands of dollars. I want to show you some drives that I scored off of eBay for about $150 a pop. This is a Gen 2 SanDisk Enterprise Grade two and a half inch SAS SSD drive. This is a 12 gig SAS drive and it's 1.6 terabytes per drive. So if you got four of these for roughly 600 bucks, it's not cheap, but it's also way cheaper than if you were to buy this new directly through Dell. Originally, this drive probably cost close to four grand. Whenever buying used equipment, there's two things you should be concerned about. One, if they take returns, if you have any issues with the hardware and two, how much lifespan is left on a drive. Now you can use various tools for the drives to look at the smart data to see how much of it was written before you purchased it. And if it's an SSD, that can be very important because I have purchased a drive before that was almost on its way to fail. However, because the seller did accept returns, they did take it back. If you can't find what you're looking for on LabGopher, you can just do some searches here on eBay and I'm going to just type in PowerEdge and then quote, and let's just say a V5 and another double quote. So here's a R230 for 245 bucks, not too shabby. But again, because it is a 1U, then it might be too loud for your environment. Now here's a nice T330 tower, but it starts at 600 bucks. Now, if you're new to IT or just getting your feet wet and five to seven hundred dollars is a bit out of your price range, then I got some extra tips for you. Another good place to look for some server deals is actually at your local community college. Go ahead and sign up for a class and meet some new people. And you might be surprised, not only could the college be giving away stuff for free, but there may be other students that are looking to pay it forward with hardware that they already have or that they've gotten from their workplaces as well. And there's two other places online that you might want to check out that are basically apps on your phone, and that would be Mercari as well as OfferUp. Now, if you end up coming up empty handed trying to find the server that would be perfect for you, and let's say that something smaller such as a Zima board might fit the bill better, sometime in the beginning of 2023, because Zima board sent me these boards here to check out and play with. Once I'm done with that, I'm going to be giving some of them away. So drop a comment below and tell me what you would use it for and why you should win it.